Well, 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 what a shocker that was. I've just spent the last hour listening to Jerome Powell and seeing what the Fed is saying going forward. And everything that we thought was going to happen, happened. And Jerome Powell actually came to speak. And even though he didn't change his tone that much and he was still quite hawkish. And I would say there was a little bit more of a slight dovishness in there from Jerome Powell this time. The market absolutely loved it, which is shocking because I thought we were going to see what we expected. Jerome Powell still staying quite hawkish and the market to hate it, but it didn't. And just look at the reaction on the share price from when the Fed came out and Jerome Powell started speaking. Absolute boom in the market. So I'm going to take you through what I've noticed in the last hour from listening to Jerome Powell and what the Fed have been saying and what my thoughts are going forward. So first of all, you might know the expectation was was the Fed was going to raise by 0.25, 25 basis points hike. And it was pretty much nailed on. I think the consensus was 93% thought that was going to happen. Now, I was a little bit like, well, oh, I'm still not sure on the Fed uh, doing that. And they did it. They did go to 0.25. So that's now from 0.75, 75 basis points to a 50 basis points to a 25 basis points. So they are starting to reverse or slow down the hikes very, very quickly. And if you listen to the tone from the Fed, from the last few meetings, you would not expect them to tone it down that fast because they are very much saying they are going to be very intense on the hikes. But then you look at what the actual actions are and they are coming down quite quickly or calming down the hikes quite quickly, which is quite surprising to what the tone has been. Now, once again, they have been toning down these hikes. But once again, you listen to the comments and the statement that the Fed brought out and it does once again sound quite aggressive on interest rate hikes. So once again, you're left here thinking, OK, it looks like they're still going to be very aggressive, but could we potentially see them slow down the hikes once more? Now, the changing or the little dovishness that was in here was they said inflation instead of remains elevated said has eased somewhat but remains elevated. Now, I would say that that's probably a fair statement and it's good they have recognised there that inflation has come down a fair bit. I would say quite aggressively as well. Now, what a few people were unsure on is this statement here where it said, the committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate. Now, a few people were wondering if that statement was going to be removed. So that suggests that at the moment, there is still planning for the interest rates to happen. Now, what that could be, anyone doesn't know. Is it going to be 0.1? Is it going to be 0.25? We'll see what happens. But a few people thought potentially they could remove that here, which didn't happen. But the difference was, as you'll see here, in determining the instead of pace, it was the extent, which was a changing of words, which a few people took a little bit dovish, of future increases in the target range. And it talks about all the things that they were going to take into consideration. That was a little bit of a changing that was also a little bit optimistic. But when you look at the S&P 500, uh, originally there was a little bit of a pop when this statement came out. A few people got a little bit excited, but nothing too much. Uh, and then as soon as Jerome Powell actually took on to the stage uh, to do his Q&A session, you can see he immediately he dropped. He basically repeated this statement that was here. And then he opened for the question and answer session. Now, in the question and answer, answer session, he was a little bit more dovish to answers that I've seen him be. He basically, what we've seen before where we look at these statements, he seems to be not giving much room at all to be to be backed into a corner. He doesn't want to be in a place where he kind of comes out and goes, yeah, we might consider not doing any more interest rate hikes. And then in a few months time, he then puts in interest rate hikes up and people are going, well, you said you weren't going to do anymore. He doesn't want that. He wants to be worst case scenario and say, yeah, we're probably going to do interest rate hikes. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, there's still going to be interest rate hikes. And then he can go to the point of view of actually going, oh, you know what? We don't need to do it anymore. He always seems to be placing in the worst case scenario. And that's what we've seen previously. You know, when even when we saw the last two Fed meetings and you looked how aggressive and the tone and the hawkishness was from the Jerome Powell, he was very aggressive. But then we've gone from 0 0.75 to 0 0.5. And the clear thing is that the suggestion is that they are going to be increasing the interest rates. But clearly, when you listen to what Jerome Powell is saying, he's basically saying, we don't know. We generally are waiting for every time that they are setting these interest rate hikes, even though they said that they expect uh, to do interest rate hikes, they are waiting for the next set of inflation 
or the next bit of data before they make that decision. And they generally are going into every meeting seeing what the next batch of inflation data is. And clearly what they have been seeing is inflation coming down at a rapid, plate, uh, rapid pace. And they even commented on it is coming down quite fast. And we've got to remember that all these impacts and these changes that we're putting in won't be seen for a few months. We're actually doing okay at the moment and inflation is coming down. And it was also a little bit um, happy as well with how the uh, economic environment was uh, and the un 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 unemployment rate and how the actual US economy is still doing quite well. So there was a lot of positive comments there, uh, but basically Jerome Powell, you know, he didn't want to leave too much room for people to get carried away, but he's also been in the point of view where he offers the optimism of we are not decided on what we're doing yet we are taking it you know meeting by meeting by meeting before we make a decision and the key thing is now when you look at what the fed have in place we we're not going to see another fed meeting now until uh, the march march well the decision comes out on march the 22nd so we've got basically you know nearly you know two, we'll call it two months we've got nearly basically two months until the fed meet again and then do their next interest rate hike so when you think about that, what's going to come in that time frame? Inflation, more inflation data. We, we will end up getting January's inflation data and February's inflation data and also some other uh, economic data in that time frame. But in, in the most important thing is the inflation data. So without doubt, if what the Fed are going to be waiting for is to wait for February's data and January's data. And if they start pushing into that, you know, 5% 5, 5 range or even low 5% range, the Fed are going to be very happy with that situation if they're seeing inflation coming down quite a bit. It also works the other way. If inflation goes, starts slowing down, uh, it's coming down, but it's at a slower rate. Let's say it goes 6.4, 6.3, 6.0, and we're still in the 6% range. Obviously, then the, the Fed are going to look at that and going, okay, we still need to keep up interest rates. But if it keeps coming down rapidly, then without doubt, when the Fed meet again in, in March time, They'll be, they'll be using that data to go, okay, we, we can keep these interest rates coming down or no, we need to keep these interest rates hike. And that's the key thing. That's the key thing now for the next two months. We got pretty positive news from the Fed, we, what we expected, and they also offered that little bit hint of dovishness, but also that they are waiting for this data for the next next decision. So the next two months are key. We've got to see inflation rapidly coming down. Now, what I also um, heard quite a bit is talking about the labour market and how strong the labour market is at the moment. It sounds like the Fed do want to see still a bit more weakness in that sort of space. And when you're looking at some of the job cuts that have been happening so far in January, uh, Google is a prime example. You probably saw uh, their, their 12,000 jobs layoff in January. I think some of the job data will start showing weakness in a little bit in the future uh, when we get towards you know uh, the numbers from, from January and into February. I think we should see some weakness in the job data uh, then. So you combine the perfect combination is if the job data gets a little bit weaker just to put pressure on the Fed to just go, okay, the economy is starting to show, so show some signs of weakness, but at the same time, inflation is still rapidly coming down. And let's say, hopefully we get into that, you know, that 5% range. If we get into that, uh, that range there and that starts happening, that would be the perfect combination where the Fed go, okay, potentially this is the time where we need to consider uh, slowing uh, this, this down now or potentially stopping them. Obviously, that would be the ideal situation or even a, a reduction to 10 basis, point, 10 basis points and then a, then a halt. Uh, the, the interesting thing that what the Fed was saying is that basically uh, at the, uh, a few months ago is they gave their data on what they think you know inflation will be, what interest rates will be. Uh, on this March uh, update, they're going to be offering some new forecasts on where potentially they think uh, all that data range is going to be in the future. So it'd be really interesting to see their forecasts on what they're projecting on like interest rates in the future, potentially when they could do interest rate cuts, what they see employment at, what they see inflation at. So this this March date is, is going to be when the next meeting in March is is going to be massively interesting because we're going to see once again what's the job market like what's inflation going to be like what are the fed projecting for the long term when do they see interest rate cuts happening so this is going to be a, a very very big meeting and obviously we're going to need to see some really key data uh, in the next few months and hopefully that really does go in our favor but overall my thoughts are i think it just went uh, as good as what it could have done and i think if anything um i think that 
will support this uh, this rally that we've had in the short term um, and I think really now all eyes turn on the inflation data for the next two months and see if the rapid descent in inflation does continue. So I hope you enjoyed the video anyway guys, a bit of a late one but as you know the uh, for us in the UK the Fed don't end up talking or Jerome Powell doesn't come out to speak until quite late for us so um, apologies for that but not too much I can do. Anyway I hope you enjoyed it, smash the like button if you're new around here, subscribe and I'll catch you in a bit.